Hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. So we continue to see sideways action. Um, the market is currently holding relevant support levels. We're holding here our latest trend reversal area. In fact, we entered it and reversed out of it. And the expectation would be for Ethereum to continue to follow the trend to push higher into the yeah, $2,250 to $2,300 region next. That would be sort of the next FIP extension targets because we can measure here the length of waves one through three. We go to the current wave four low and then we're looking here at the area around, okay, 2,235 is actually the next target, um, but it goes all the way up to 2,350 with the one to one ratio. So these are the key levels that we would look for next. Um, in between, we've got the 78.6 extension at 2,286, just sort of that region. Yeah, they are not super reliable, but it's that region and so far we are consolidating above the $2,000 level, which is great. The Shanghai upgrade, obviously it was the right decision to ignore it completely in our analysis. I saw a lot of other people talk about, oh, there will be a huge sell off afterwards and things like that. We didn't see any of that coming. At the time we called the um, Ethereum merge top because it was a bearish wave structure. Here we didn't have a bearish wave structure and obviously people always try to make the news fit as the chart moves. So there will now be a lot of people who say, okay, Obviously, it went successful, that upgrade. So obviously, the market moved upside. Um, had we seen a sell-off, people would have said, all right, of course, it was buy the rumor, sell the news. So they always try to make the news fit the price. It's pointless. We just focused the price and it was the completely, completely the right decision to just follow our price structure, follow the Elliott Wave roadmap, focus on higher. Because the message was, as long as we're holding $1,800, that was the key pivot point. Yeah, We carry on with our current roadmap and that was clearly direct breakout to the upside, even though it became quite choppy here, even though it became quite choppy. And even though there's always an alternative plan in place, yeah, always a, a fallback scenario. The primary scenario here worked out nicely and the trend reversal areas worked out. I did get a few questions. Of course, you always get the questions when the price moves, because if we really are in a third wave, then this is the FOMO wave. Now, I think we're not really there yet with the FOMO, but I think it will start if we see more upside. Um, even though we've been talking about this upside for many, many weeks, yeah, because the chart was prepared, everything was prepared in the chart. But people always ask, you know, when's the next entry point? When's the next entry point? Now, I give you these trend reversal areas. Now, I cannot tell you use them to enter because, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't know you. I don't know your portfolio. I don't know how much money you have available. I don't know your risk appetite, but they can be used for trading. Or I use them, for example, for pullback trades. Yeah, For example, if we have a trend reversal area here sitting between 1994 and 2066, this could be used for scaling in, having a couple of or three different orders set, for example, yeah, or one order that's split into three different buy orders, um, basically one trade split into different buy orders that you at least get a foot into the door Yeah, if you haven't got that yet. And then you can just measure your risk very accurately because you know where you set your stop loss. Now, again, setting a stop loss is a very individual decision. You know, I can't tell you where to do that because, again, it depends on your portfolio. Depends on do you use any leverage? Do you not use leverage? What's your portfolio th size? How much are you willing to lose or risk in a single trade? So all of that comes together. But um, the, the most reasonable way, in my opinion, to trade it is to scale into these support areas. For example, we had one here that was successful. Yeah, everybody would be in profit. We had one here, everybody would be in profit. And then just set the stop loss below the box. You risk little, but the reward is high, okay? But at least these areas allow you to measure your risk. Now, do they work all the time? Of course not, but I think we had a good um, tr uh, history here now of working uh, support levels and trend reversal areas since um well for a long time really but that's all history and that's all in the videos um what what do we see here at the moment well we see sideways action yeah saturday is typically sideways action saturday okay so we see wave fours on saturdays very often this currently is a wave four a wave four is a horizontal correction typically sideways correction um, often a flat pattern or a triangle i think we see that now we see a little bit of a triangle shape there um, and I think we're heading into the apex of a triangle, but note that these triangles, they can always extend out further. So just because we're heading here into the apex of a triangle, it doesn't mean we need to see the major breakout. We could do, but often, especially on a Saturday, you see this extend out further. Um, and then it's impossible to say what kind of triangle is it. Now it would be reasonable to say it's a wave four triangle. So wave four triangle means it would break to the upside and it would be 
A, B, C, D, and then a small E wave down and we could break to the upside. Absolutely reasonable. It could also be, and that's why it makes sense not to really focus too much on the subwave structures of corrections. It could be that this was an A wave to the downside. We're now working here on a B wave triangle and the C wave down is still to come because the B wave could also be a triangle, but it would break to the downside. That's why it makes little sense to really try to well, have the most pristine Elliott wave count readily available for every small correction because these can change quickly. You know, Elliott gave us one impulse. Impulses are straightforward to trade. Corrections are difficult to trade. So it's best to really understand in a given correction, how far down could the price come, allows you to measure your risk and then just use the trend reversal area for trading if you want to do it. But um, yeah, this is sort of where we are. Um, again, next targets to the upside. We talked about that. Um, 1994 is the key level below which we have to change our perspective. Um, we also look could look at, I normally don't do that, but we could look here at the exchange data. So how much ETH, how many ETH are available on all exchanges? We can see it's basically at an all time low. So absolutely not bearish. Um, there is no particular rush for people to sell their ETH at the moment. So this has gone down, you know, over over the years. Um, I can also go to the very long history here. Yeah, so they can go back to 2020. But basically based on this, it's an all time low. So there's no reason to be bearish at the moment about Ethereum, I think. I mean, the price is bullish. And also the exchange data tells us there are not many people who are putting their ETH now onto exchanges to sell them. So from that point of view, there is no particularly ru particular rush of people to sell their ETH suddenly. And there's no point to be bearish at the moment, in my opinion. Um, of course, things can change. So also here, if on the Ethereum chart things change, I will, of course, make you aware um, and so on. Yeah, but that's my update about Ethereum. I hope you liked the update. Um, if you're interested to learn more about Elliott Wave technical analysis and so on and trading, then check out our trading course that you can find on morecryptoonline.com. If you really like the content, also check out the channel membership. We've got tons of tutorials about Elliott Wave. I sometimes get the question how to learn Elliott Wave. Well, we've got a lot of learning material, a lot, really a lot. Hours of videos and, and live stream tutorials you can watch, reading material and so on in the membership. And we also do regular weekly live streams. There's just tons of stuff there. Um, and um, yeah, otherwise, um, maybe you can leave us a like and uh, subscribe to the channel and then see you in the next video. Bye bye.